Hello everyone, this is Cunt Nuggets and welcome to episode 7 of the Wigan Athletic Career Mode. And as of recording this, version 1.03, the update for FIFA 18, has just come out. So the quick things about that, basically the minimap at the bottom has been improved, so it's now the colour of your kit, not just white and black. Thank you. Keepers are going to be potentially better. Also, thank you. And a few things to do with transfers and offering players contracts and all that stuff have been improved. So, that's out of the way. Now, on to the youth players. So, let's quickly just run through it very quickly. I'm not going to really try and talk about it too much. Go to new guys. Charles Mitchell. Na, na, na. You are out of here. John Turner might be alright. Might be okay, John Turner. So, I think... Max Robinson's looking pretty good, potential-wise, but everything else is a bit shit. I mean, if his minimum potential is 70, that is still a good youth player. So we'll sign him up to the youth academy, and we'll wait on these guys to see where the max potential... Oh, no, you know what? Actually, we'll sign up Mason White as well. Fuck it. His low potential is still good enough for our main team at the moment. So yeah, we'll sign those guys up, and we'll leave these guys in the academy for now. So here are the players in the youth squad. Max Robinson, 47 overall, potential of 70 to 90. Physical stats, he's pretty quick and not very good at anything else. And there's his technical stats. Cameron Harris, the goalkeeper. Again, we've seen him before, but he's still looking pretty good. And Mason White, pretty good physical stats, actually. Over them reactions and agility, he's quite good. And technically, he is absolutely wank. But he's 6'2", and he's quite quick. That could be good for the future. And as it is now officially the transfer window, we're going to go in for a few players. The main ones being Gilby and McDonald. We're going to try and offer player swaps for these guys to kind of keep our wage budget in a good merc. And then we're also going to go in for potentially Miles Robinson because he's a good young centre-back and I want to get some good young players into the squad and start training them up early on. But we'll start off first with Alex Gilby. And as it turns out, we can't get Gilby. Now, I thought that you could just go in for players, approach to buy him, and it could go through. But because he has recently joined the club, you can't get him, which is bullshit. He joined in fucking August. The end of August. And, yeah, apparently it might be a year long now. I'll keep checking back with Gilby and see if I can buy him at some point. If not, we'll have to wait till next fucking season. But now, let's start off with then, Angus McDonald. And because Angus McDonald is pretty much, you know, out of fucking contract, we can only offer him a contract. We can't buy him straight from Burnsley, which is just fucking amazing. So two of our signings so far, not looking like they're going to go fucking through. Bastard, right. Important first team play, let's just do this as quick as possible. That's what he's talking for, beautiful. Contract length, four years. Don't be a dick and accept it. Two years? We will just count her at three. Beautiful. Release clause. Let's disregard a release clause. I don't think he's good enough to get one. He's currently on 5,800. We will offer him 6,000 and just advance. Submit offer. Bang. 6,000 pound. Okay, he doesn't want that much. He wants a decrease in wage, but wants a signing bonus and a clean sheet bonus. We don't keep clean sheets, so that won't be a problem. Signing bonus of 83,000. It's not too much. Yeah, we'll do that. Fuck it. There you go. Angus McDonald is either joining the club. He will join as soon as the transfer window opens. So I think he's going to join next year now, which is fantastic. Which is obviously what I wanted. Let's hope that Miles Robinson is just a bit different. And we can actually sign this guy now then. So yeah, hopefully this will be a person we bring in now. Not next fucking season. You want 430,000 and a selling clause of 10%. <laughs> yeah, I'm alright with that. I mean, if I do sell the guy in the future, he will probably get up to like a 75 overall, I'm guessing, so up by 12. If I sell him, then probably be about, I don't know, 10 million, so that's only a million. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Boom. Marcus Robinson. Let us start negotiating with the player now then. Bang. Beautiful. So, the agent said we want this, this, and this, so I've given this, this, and this. Now, on to the wage, which he's now saying it's up to me. So, I'll offer him 1,200 and no signing bonus. Submit the offer. Let's see what he says. 
Okay, he just wants 1,100. And he wants a 14,000 signing bonus. I can agree to that. Boom. There we go. A player has joined the club and it is Miles Robinson, a good young centre-back. Beautiful. But now into the actual games themselves and the first one is going to be us versus Northampton away from home on the 1st of January. So then let's get underway. We've got Emmanuel Boateng making his first appearance for the club and also we've got this new update to uh, contend with and see how different it will be. Apparently the only thing that's changed is that keepers are hopefully better which is not a bad thing at all. Here's Boateng. Look him go! Look at the rapid fuck! Go on lad! You quick little bastard! Fucking quick motherfucker! I like this guy! Looks like Boateng might be a very good purchase. Wah! What the hell Dunkley with this fucking shot from nothing? I was not expecting that. I just held to it and went ha! Good layoff right Powell now. Plays either side of him, we've got the speedster on the fucking left of him. And Boateng, he's a fucking beast. This guy is fucking amazing, Nick. 18 minutes in, Boateng on his first start for the club, gets a goal with a powerful as fuck finish. He is so rapid, and the keeper, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Good update, by the way. Keepers are fucking much better. Yeah, good update to keepers. The reactions are just 10 times better, and he fucks off to a different fucking planet, apparently. But Boateng, first start for the club, first goal for the club, and he has been amazing so far. What a signing. Oh, he's done me. He's completely done me. And they've scored. It's the first chance for Northampton, and it's the first goal. It came from a counter-attack, and it is 1-1. Hmm. Okay, then. It's a bit annoying. I mean, I've got to stop complaining about the game. I mean, usually when a goal goes in, in editing, I'm sat there thinking, why am I always complaining about the fucking goal? I mean, it was a good little move there, and it is a good finish, I suppose. And it is annoying that it's the first shot on target. It's the first chance of the game for them. But it's what FIFA 18 is. I've got to accept it and just carry on and stop, I don't know, letting them have the ball, which is almost impossible. Now through to Massey. Fall to Greg, boss you asshole. Why the hell has that guy dropped off Greg completely? Play it back across and Powell with the, what? Powell with the goal, but that is very shocking defending by fucking Northampton. I've got to question that defender though because it was three defend, maybe three, maybe four, maybe give a guy a chance to get back, but definitely three defenders against Greg. And he just stopped running. You saw them stop running. This guy just covers across. Covers across, sorry, very weakly. And in the end, we had like three men almost open. Three men in the box versus one. If that was Powell, keeper maybe should have done better, but it is 2 1. Why is Dodgy defending by Northampton? Why did you stop your run? Alright, call club now on the ball. We've got people in the box. There's one of them. Oh, how'd you miss? You've missed the sitter, Greg. You've actually missed the sitter. <laughs> Cunt. Oh, he's, in, he's actually missed a sitter. That was. That's bread and butter for Will Grigg. That really is. And he's missed an absolute sitter. And that's it. 2 2. It is literally every tack goes in. Ooh, he just come on as a, sub, uh, as a sub, I believe. And yeah, he's scored his first chance. Ah, uh, just. If Boateng was there, he just couldn't for some reason get there. This guy just skipped past everyone. And for some reason, unknown to everybody, this guy is very clear in the box. And it's a good finish, I suppose. But that is terrible, terrible defending. It's ended 2-2 and it really shouldn't have done. That is a very dodgy game and I'm, I can't. It's, uh, it's fucking frustrating. It really is a frustrating game, that. It's been one, again, one of them games again for pretty much every shot we have. It saved all that chance by Grig at the end. I, un I honestly don't understand how that's missed. I really don't. Because 9 times out of 10, well, it's not even 9. It's like 99 times out of 100, he scores it. And that's a 1 time out of 100. He misses it, and it's a 2-2 draw because of it. 
so I am very quickly going to have a little mini rant about FIFA 18, not the gameplay which is still a bit broken, but more about the transfers in career mode, and that is buying and selling players. So if a player has only got 6 months left on their contract, you can't buy them outright, you have to buy them on a pre-contract. That is fucking stupid as fuck, it really is, and I suppose the way around it is to buy them before the transfer window comes around, but again, it is just a bit stupid. I don't. I don't like it, it's something they should have addressed in testing and they haven't. Second thing is selling players. For some reason, I cannot transfer list Church or Bruce. Bruce has got 6 months left on his contract and I can't transfer list him, but judging on the last point I made, that makes sense. But Simon Church has got a year and 6 months left and we cannot transfer list him because he has recently accepted a contract with the club. Honestly, I don't get it, it is very strange, but there it is. Hopefully, these guys will get sold without us deciding. Hopefully the board just says, you know what, we'll sell them, we've got your back. But that's the only way it's going to happen because I physically can't do a fucking thing. So we have a transfer offer for a player I'm not looking to sell because obviously it's FIFA, but if a Sean McDonald, now he hasn't played that much, if at all, he's mainly a second team player. Now, we have up and coming central midfielders who will surpass Sean McDonald very soon. Plus we do have people loaned out in this position, for example Jack Byrne, who could come back and easily overtake Sean McDonald for his place in that second team. So I'm thinking of accepting this from Ipswich, but maybe just, I don't know, negotiating it slightly because I want to get a bit more money if I can from Sean McDonald and maybe let's try and do a player swap if we can. Uh, can we propose a new transfer fee? Nope, we can't ask for a player swap, that would be amazing if we could. Uh, let's just say 550,000. I should almost say 600,000, if the fucking, if it lets me do it, that is, it's just so fucking, ugh. In, un, uh, unreactive, what's the word, anyway, sum it off, let's say 600,000 for him, let's see what they say, 570. I'm gonna be an asshole. 575. There you go. They're willing to pay 575,000 for Sean McDonald. So I'm upset about losing him, but if we do lose him and he gets sold because we can't bring in Gilby now, we'll have a look at our squad, see if we do need another central midfielder, then either recall Jack Byrne or look to bring somebody else in. But probably, if anything, recall Jack Byrne from his loan. And now for the next game in the episode, which will be a home match in the FA Cup round of three versus QPR. But a quick thing before we get into it, I want to mention the breaking news feature for now has been fixed in this latest update. It's now going to refresh and give us actual up-to-date news, rather than Lukaku and Matuidi and all that same bullshit. So that's some good news though. So unfortunately not at Loftus Road for this match, but hopefully it will be a game we can progress through. I am using my first team for the FA Cup and that is because it has more prize money and we are getting to the end of the Caribou Cup pretty much. There's only like a max of uh, three games left and they're coming up next. We've got two... Um... Shit me, really? We've got two semi-final games coming up and if we make it through that, it will be the final and I will use my second team for all those matches. But fuck me! Stop! Right, Grig, forward to Boateng, who has, we know, has got pace. Can he pick out a good cross? So it looks like he can. And Gavin, what the fuck is going on with headers now? Headers have become a lot harder for some reason. Things that usually work are not working anymore. Ball in the box. Boateng, you are so fucking good. you just rapid as fuck and you get into good positions. Your shirt's well too big for you, mate, by the way. Just a little fucking thing I wanted to mention, but that's his second goal in two games. And the header before it from Grig, again, the headers have seemed to be a bit shit now. I don't know why, but it wasn't even Grig, it was Powell. And it just fell and Boateng just got in there. Weird noise on my mouth. Boateng just got in there, risked it got a chance, got a goal, and it's 1-0. Boateng, you are fucking doing good at the moment, and you are massively showing up Massey and Jacobs and making them worse. I don't know how you're doing that, by the way. I really don't. Why am I just watching them? 
Okay, who's marking him? Good save by Walton, but who's marking him? Grig. Good little turn. Good little shot, and it's wide. Wide, wide, wide. Good chance, though. And who is marking? Who is marking? Ah, <laughs> it's the same fucking... It's the exact same time that Northampton scored. The exact same time. They go attacking, and then within three minutes, they get a goal. Three minutes in game time, which is the next attack. And I've got my team on defensive as well. They're all back. Well, they're meant to be back defending, but there is actually nobody marking this guy here. And it, that is what... That is just fucking fantastic. What a finish. How are you meant to fucking defend a completely unrealistic shot like that you cannot chip a ball like that with a right footed fucking finessed effort bollocks and it's 1-1 that is the biggest pile of shit I have ever fucking seen in FIFA that shot talk about fucking bullshit there it fucking is in full force Boateng over to Greg, who can flick it on, and Colclough in the box. Fuck you. You fuck me with bullshit. I'm going to fuck you right back, you fucking cunt. You don't deserve shit from this game. Get fucked. Cracking. That's a good move. That's actually a good passing move and a good finish. Whereas hers was, and oh, oh my god, your arms. Sort your arms out. Boateng, you can't just do a game without being involved somehow, either scoring a goal, like you've done twice now, getting a good ball up to Greg like that, or fucking your arms up like a weird cunt, but good finish by Cole Club. It's 2-1. We're in the lead now. Now we're going to go ultra defensive and make some fucking changes as well. Because fuck me, I'm not doing this again. That mass it into Perkins. Can we get a fucking last minute fucking 3-1? Seal the game out. Seal the game. Why are you still going, mate? The ball went out of play, but it's 2-1. These fucking games are getting a lot harder and a lot less in terms of us winning by like 3 or 4-0. Now, apparently, they haven't updated that side of the game. They've updated the keeping. Yet, it seems like you can't score as much because you can't get to the fucking goal. And they score a lot more frequently, which I didn't think was possible. But it is 2-1, and it is uh, us through to the next round of the FA Cup. So, once again, we were the better side, and I can't remember QPR having four shots on target. The only one I remember was that bullshit goal, but... It is 2-1, we are through, and let's just put this game to the back of our mind and move on and maybe get some transfers done. Well, I was thinking about bringing Jack Byrne back from his loan at Oldham, but it doesn't matter. His loan deal has expired and he has come back on his own. That is kind of almost perfect timing for Sean McDonald to actually leave the club, so spot on there, spot on. And now for the next game in the episode, it will be the first leg of the semi-finals in the Caribou Cup against Watford. So then... Here we are at the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg. We've got a few player debuts. We've got Chaplin making his debut. We've got this guy Robinson making his debut. We've also technically got Jack Byrne making his debut in this career mode. So very interesting indeed how these players will react and if these people will add to this second team that has been shit as of late. Yet someone has made it through all this way. I don't tell me. Don't ask me how. I don't know. I really don't. Fall to... Burns all over the place at the moment in a good way. Right, Chaplin, there we go. Connor Chaplin making a run through. Fake shot inside. He's done well to do that. And he's got himself a fucking goal. Connor Chaplin. Beautiful fucking play from the lad. Oh, that's a better... I actually like that celebration. It's not as obnoxious as the fucking weird little bird shit. Or the plane, whatever it is. But it's a good move down that right side. Also, it's with Evans, I believe, making an interception at the back. Fake shot by Chaplin, and that is a good finish as well past the keeper, top of the goal. And this second team looking a lot better now, he didn't even kick the fucking ball. He kicked the ground, and apparently he kicked the ball. But Chaplin gets a goal, it came from that right side, Byrne, who has been everywhere, Jack Byrne that is, fantastic on that right side, getting the ball through, and it's a 1-0. Oh, lovely Perkins. That was actually beautiful. <laughs> that was just beautiful. Call club. Good finish, lad. Cracking finish, actually. But how the hell are you picking up him? Evans is quite a tall lad. But lovely flick by Perkins into the path of Elder. That's a good ball in. Shit defending, but that is a cracking finish. But 
Honestly, that is an amazing finish. Just a right-footed volley, first time, into the back of the net. This is against Watford. Premier League, Premier League. I fucking said that like a twat. Premier League Watford, 2-0 up with their second team within 15 minutes. I can't explain this game. I really fucking can't. Chaplin and Carlclough, I got the goals for us. I don't know why I always turn Irish after. I mean, a good fucking move, boy. I don't know why. It's kind of racist if you think about it, but don't think about it. Just accept it and carry on because they're probably going to fucking score and how long to keep this fucking stupid thing in. I don't know why I'm still talking like an absolute twat. I really don't know. Ho 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 ho, to be sure. Don't take my lucky charms. Now he's getting racist. Please stop this fucking attack so I can stop being a fucking Irish bastard. Please, for fuck's sake. For fuck's sake, don't do it all. What oh, 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 oh. What are you doing? Stop fucking passing. Oh shit. I'm so happy you hit the fucking post because now I'll still include it, but it's not as embarrassing. You didn't make the run, did you? You went to, but you didn't. White boy. Chappers. Connor Chaplin, second second goal of the game for him. Honestly, I'm I'm not even joking here. I was just thinking, oh, it's been blocked. It's going to go out for a corner kick. Oh, the keeper's going to save it. You went to the bottom corner. You're looking the wrong way, cameramen. You're looking at each other. The players are in front of you. But I played it through to Chaplin here from White. Went for a shot. It came off Ziegler, I believe his name is. It did a slight deflection, probably took it into the net in the end, and it's 3 0. Chaplin technically a second goal, but I don't know. But fucking fantastic. Through to the Chappers. Fake shot, your man. Again. Same as the first half? It is the same as the first half. Connor Chaplin, you are the king of fake shots and finesse goals. 4 0, hat trick on your debut. Beautiful, lad. Absolutely beautiful. Good ball for a thought. Fuck it, I'll try a fake shot back inside. Finesse shot from here. And it's in off the post. 4 0, Chappers with the goal. I keep calling people Chappers and Perks and all that shit. No, his name's Chaplin. Connor Chaplin, double C. First game for the club. A hat trick. Not bad at all. Perkins. There's no one in front of him. There's actually no one in front of him. Hey, naked. I just stopped. Evans off to the Berkst. But I keep saying shit like that. Chaplin with a shot. And again. Holy shit, Chaplin scored four. He's been helped with two of his goals. No doubt about it. The second one. And also this one. He has been helped with. Fucking hugely. Massive help on them goals. But I, I don't get it. He's like, he just gets the ball in every situation and does amazing with it. Perkins was nowhere near this. I don't know why I said his name for. A shot there, it bounced back to him. And then, yeah, the keeper should have done better, no doubt about it. But it's 5-0 and it's all because of Connor Chaplin. Yeah, the keeper really should have done better there though. But 5-0, Chaplin with another goal and who can stop the lad going? Is that a penalty? That was a penalty, but do you know what? I'll not fucking complain. 5 0. Chaplin gets four. Shut up, dog next door. I'm trying to record. Five shots, four goals. Two of them shots came in the same goal. I, I, I honestly can't explain it. I really can't. It is just a mystery. It really is. We beat Walter 5 0, yet we can't. Well, we're sorry. We struggle to beat Northampton, and we get a 2 2 draw. We struggle to beat QPR, who are a good side, or a championship, we just get a 2-1 win. Playing against Watford, we win 5-0. We actually scored more than every shot on target. How did we do that? We only had fucking four shots on target, apparently. I suppose the deflection from Connor Chaplin's shot going in was that, but I think for the first time ever in a long time, well, first time ever in a long time, the first time ever... We have actually scored every shot on target and some. So yeah, there you go. And yeah, um, obviously Connor Chaplin gets a 10 for four goals. And who got the assist? White got one, Burt got one, Elder got one, Cogger got two. But yeah, a 10 for Chaplin and it is a well-deserved 10. And there is confirmation that Sean McDonald has been sold to Ipswich. That's two of our players now gone to Ipswich, Power and McDonald. Why they need both? I don't fucking know. 
but he's gone and Jack Byrne is a perfect replacement for him and in that last game he got outshone by Chaplin but he was a very good fucking player as well so yeah McDonald sad to see you go but we've got Jack Byrne instead he's a lot better and the next game in this episode will be the first sim game of the episode versus Peterborough they're not doing that well recently, they've won against MK Dons, which is actually quite a good accomplishment, but they've drawn against, well sorry, they lost against Doncaster and Walsall. So with their first team, not been in the best run of forms at the moment, our first team, drew against Northampton, then beat QPR. I said that's not a good run of form, that's actually quite a fucking good run of form, but compared to our second team, not as good, and we'll skip ahead. It's a 2-0 win, but Walton has suffered an injury, which is not good. Plus they were down to 10 men. And it is a bad injury. Christian Walton will be out for two months. Well, eight weeks, which is about two months, which is not fucking good because he is our first choice keeper and our second choice, Jamie Jones, isn't that good. So it looks like we might have to go and buy ourselves a keeper. I wanted to anyway, but now it's even more important we do. And also in other news, Sam Stubbs is returning from his loan at Crew Alexandra. Another centre back coming back, which means I'm gonna. Well, sorry, another centre back at our club, which means I'm gonna have to let one of them, or at least two of them, have got now to leave. And the next game is going to be a match we're gonna play against Plymouth. We're away from home for this one, and they are currently sitting fifth in the table. So here that we are, we're away from home at Home Park. Yes, it's fucking weird. But going with our first team again, and we want to just uh, hopefully get this team playing a bit better than they have been recently. Maybe Boateng can get his third goal in three games. Played games, that is, not obviously sim games. Because uh, he didn't score in that one, Greg did. And it's also the first game without Walton, who is injured. I am looking to bring in a keeper, but I'm not going to rush into it. I don't want to sign a keeper who ends up being shit without fully scouting him first. This is fucking boring, this is fucking boring, what a fucking boring game, this is fucking boring. Oh, he's, won he's walked past him, he's at the bar, and he's fucking, you hit it straight at you mate, for fuck's sake, pick it up. That's the best chance of the game. He won the ball, Nick Pearl then as well, fucking hell, I wasn't expecting that to actually carry on. Massey, why, he saw the fucking, and he felled him, you saw the power to shoot, he didn't shoot, and felled him afterwards. That is how fucked Massey has been this episode. Burn. Chat playing back to Burn. Not a good first touch and it's kind of let him down. But it's our first chance of the match. Game's ended 0-0. I have no idea what's going on with this session. But I'm so tempted just to stop playing for a while and come back. Because it has been, above the Watford game, it has been absolutely retarded. It's just been shit. Both teams have been shit this game. Plymouth had loads of chances, loads of chances for Plymouth, none on target other than maybe one or two that hit the post and maybe the keeper saved. It has been that bad. I just, I can't put my finger on it. It's, obviously the update's come out and obviously that's the thing I'm going to blame, but stuff like that, the headers, the shots that normally would go either on target or to the keeper are going over or just being shit. One shot on target for Plymouth from nine, Three from eight from us. That is how bad this game was and how bad FIFA 18 feels at the moment. And the next game this episode will be a sim game. We did win 5-0 in the first leg against Watford. Using our second team yet again for this one. We should realistically go through because unless Watford wins 6-0, which I doubt they will. Could happen, you don't know. Chalibur's got a goal already, but unless they win 6-0 or you know get a 5-0 win, we are going through. And it's 2-0, so maybe it fucking could happen. Who fucking knows? But no, it's just a 3-0 win for them. I mean, yeah, I've lost the game and I'm disappointed, but we're still going through and I just there's no point playing it. There's no point. It's a waste of time. 3-0 for them. We're still going through. 5-3 on aggregate. And now for the next game, it's going to be against Everton in the FA Cup fourth round away at Goodison Park. And I've had a bit of a break before this game, so hopefully now I'll be up for it and ready and we can change our fortunes around with our first team. So we are at Goodison Park for this match versus Everton. It is one of the biggest challenges we will probably face. And I think I've said that every time we've played against a relatively good side, but this really is the best side we've played so far this career mode. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in this match. And if Burn makes a run, he's going to have a lot of space to run into. You can pick out a pass to Will Grigg and it's not the terrible header. And Martina, Cuco Martina kept it in play. 
Right, weapon ball in with the corner. Bit of power on it this time. Nope, still not working out for us. Jacob's got the... And he's got it. And he's had a shot saved by Pickford. By far the best chance of the game. And it fell to Michael Jacobs. Oh, that's a good move by Gerd, but And it's inside to Niasse and it's 1-0. It's the first chance of the game and they've scored it. First chance on target, that is. And uh, Niasse gets a good shot on goal. And it's all from Gerbot really. And it's just poor defending. But it does, seem, it does seem that Everton are not as good as I thought they would be. But they are very... Um, Damaging up front, and I don't know what Dan Burns doing there. I really don't. That is poor defending from him. Let someone get in front of him. No effort at all. And I will blame the keeper, but he is a backup keeper because our main one is injured and he isn't good enough for this uh, team. But it's one 0 to Everton. Three ball to Bulleting. Can he get his third goal in three games? It's a good save by Pickford. It's not even three games, is it? Now though, it's more getting on third goal in five games. Each wouldn't pass again, and there we go. We've lost 1-0, we're right at the FA Cup, but it wasn't Everton who beat us, that was the game that beat us today. Just nothing we can do about anything. Every time we got forward, they came through the back of us and won the ball, and the referee was like, yeah, play on, whatever, I don't give a shit. Then when we got the ball, we passed upfield and had a shot. Pickford either made a great save, or it just went horribly wide. It was a game I don't think we deserve to lose, but also one I don't think we deserve to win. Maybe a draw for that one, maybe a fucking replay, but yeah, the game decided we weren't going to win that one, and we didn't. So it's 1-0 to Everton, and we are out. Now we've got to rely heavily on the Carabao Cup. Uh, it kind of makes it even more annoying when the only shot on target went in when we had six shots on target, but again, that is FIFA. I have to get used to it. I know they're not going to update it because obviously they've done updates now and one of the biggest problems has been for a fucking while now that every shot they take on Legendary seems to go in both now on career mode and also on the Ultimate Team Squad Battles, whatever it's called they seem to score every shot on target as well so it's a problem they have and they're not going to fix it and now we are getting into the post commentary part of this video now I didn't want this to be post commentary but I've had to do it this way because of two reasons one, if I didn't, the video would be about 50 odd minutes long. Luckily, it's only going to be 42 minutes long. Still a long time, I do apologise for that, by the way. And the other reason is the audio was a bit fucked up. And when I say a bit fucked up, it was quite massively fucked up. So I salvaged as much as I could from the first part, but it was just so bad after that that it has to be post commentary. So you saw the they won a sim game versus Oxford. It was a Jacobs getting the winning goal in that game. And then we went into transfers. Now this is one of the reasons why the episode would have taken so long to actually be normally cut and edited was because of this. It took us a long time to do a lot of transfers. By the time like I went back and looked at it, it was about an hour I spent doing transfers and trying to get deals across the line because it was transfer deadline day. But we did manage to make our first agreement with the club to sign a player. And that was Jordan Archer from Millwall. Doing a swap with some money for Simon Church, which was a, a good deal for us. Simon Church hasn't really uh, made an impact at the club. He was a bit of a shit player, so bringing in a keeper, which we did need to do because obviously Walton's injury and our other two keepers, not that good. Obviously, Serkic going back on loan, but back from his loan, back to Villa. So we definitely needed to bring in at least one new keeper, and Jordan Urchel was a big target for me. Now, you saw then all the money we spent for him, his wage demands, and here are his stats. Now, if what we paid for him, I was expecting a bit better, but he is only 24 years old. He can get much better, but it's a good thing to bring in a good young keeper. We can train him up, get some youth keepers coming through the system as well, and then we'll have a bit of, um, a, bit of a chance to actually use good keepers who are at the club permanently. So, it was a good deal for us. And then came this part of the video. Now... Basically watch the video and listen to me explain what my process was because it was a bit weird. Now, as you all know, we are trying to get rid of quite a few players. Simon Church being one of them and luckily for us, we managed to get rid of him to Millwall. That's it, Millwall. Yeah, definitely Millwall. And we got Archer in return. Plus a bit of cash. But the other people were Bruce. Alex Bruce desperately wanted to leave and we wanted him to leave as well. And we had people like... Noel Hunt and uh, Gary Roberts and potentially Craig Morgan as well. So I went with the mindset of 
let's just get in rotation players like third choice left backs, right backs, centre backs and maybe another like right midfielder and just swap the players we don't want, decrease our wage budget quite a bit and bring in some good young talent. So that is what we decided to do with this guy, a good young right back managed to get a deal off to swap Alex Bruce with Cambridge United for this guy which I was more than happy with because Alex Bruce he was just so so much money on the wages it was just like any offer that I put forward for them was going to be a good one because they were getting a good player well I say a good player, a high rated player we were getting a youngster who would potentially go on to be a good quality player for us and we were saving potentially like six grand a week in wages which was just amazing to do. Now the next guy was Wakefield and we tried to do a swap deal including Noel Hunt. They did not want a striker, they instead wanted a central midfielder but luckily that extended to Gary Roberts. So I got a bit lucky there but I say I got a bit lucky getting these guys in. I did approach maybe 12 to 15 players just trying to do player swaps. So I went through every single league looking for good young right midfielders, good young left backs, centre backs, right backs and then just went in for them and did the player swap thing because what is good on this FIFA which was obviously not in previous FIFAs is the ability to play a swap and add money a lot easier than you could before so you saw that I went in and tried to offer Noel Hunt they said no 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 we don't want Noel Hunt but we would like you know a player in this position and it is so much easier to do player swaps that way and I can't abuse the system a bit by going for so many players and just constantly offering for a swap deal so you saw that we brought in the right midfielder Chris Wakefield then we went in for this keeper Soriano and finally somebody wanted Noel Hunt however they also wanted about 590 thousand pound with him then I've sped this bit up quite a lot this was frustrating as fuck. This guy was just either the worst person ever at negotiating or the best. Because he started off at 440. He wanted 440,000 plus no hunts. I was like, I'm not going to spend that much. Maybe bring it out to 400,000. He was like, no, no, no. Now I want 450,000. Every time we offered lower, he got like, I don't know, his, his ego got hurt and we, are, we had to offer like more money. And then eventually he kept going up and up and up. He did not understand how negotiations worked, or he did, and was a fucking genius, but eventually we caved and accepted the £460,000 and no hunt to bring in another keeper because, like I said before, Jamie Jones, good keeper, good like third choice keeper, but not someone we wanted as a second choice because now we've got Archer and hoping to get this guy in. Two similar keepers, two hopefully good quality keepers. We could challenge for places and we can rotate and off and do all this stuff so that was a plan and this guy was um, going to work out a lot cheaper than Urcher. Urcher was like £15,000 a week in wages whereas this guy I think he was from an Italian league much cheaper and it turns out in the end he was actually the exact same overall so maybe I rushed into the Urcher deal a bit too quick but we did get rid of Simon Church so it's not too bad but then came this moment. Adebayo Akinfenwa was available for a pre-contract. He wasn't retiring. Usually he retires on FIFA within like the first season or you can't buy him because he's just joined another club but luckily we could go in for him and I fucking did. I offered him a rotation role, a two-year contract and his wage demands were not that much so I thought, you know what, fuck it. We will bring in Adebayo Akinfenwa as the third choice striker for next season because now we'll have Greg Chaplin Akin Fenwa as a third choice. Tony will go back to Newcastle. Then we'll also have Barrigan and Callum Lang. Loan out one of those two. Keep the other one as like a fourth choice potential winger kind of style player. But have three main strikers to choose from and happy as fuck with that. But then came this bit here. One of them things you can skip forward if you want up until we do a squad report. But this is just a major deal that went on throughout you know, the transfer window. And it's a lot of weird deals. Like, biggest one I can see there that's the strangest one. Luke Shaw going to Swansea. Now, I know Luke Shaw's not had the best of times at United, but to sell off a youngster to Swansea, it doesn't make much it doesn't make much sense. I suppose it makes more sense than selling him to a rival, but selling off a youngster 
United, that is weird. Usually they loan them out or sell them with a buyback clause, but obviously there's no buyback clauses in FIFA. But yeah, very strange indeed, but you saw a couple of deals like Baines and Piszczek going to Chelsea. They seem like they are set deals because all the career mode YouTubes I've seen, those deals go through as well. Merck, if it's joining Arsenal, is a big one as well. And a lot of the English players went to foreign clubs, which was also interesting to see. But then came the squad report. Again, you can skip through this if you want to. Just a quick look at all their players now and showing you the new people like Juan Sariano. By the way, great name, Juan Sariano. There's only Juan Sariano. Number one. Beautiful. Also, we've got people like Urcher in there. The new guy, I think it's Leon Davis. Good young right back who could come in if people get injured. So that's what I wanted to do. Get squad depth. Because we had... Like, yeah, we had a left back, well, two left backs, two right backs, and a few centre backs, but we only had two right backs. So, if we did get an injury like we did to Walton, to Nathan Byrne or Luke Burke, then we had one right back to choose from, and it was not the best of things. The only thing that I didn't manage to do was bring in another left back. I tried, I really did fucking try, but we couldn't in the end. But luckily, we got in Wakefield, a right midfielder who can come in for Massey or Jacobs if they get injured or play shit like they did for this episode, so we did a lot of good business, obviously so McDonald got rid of a lot of Deadwood players we didn't want at the club like Bruce Hunt and Roberts and also got rid of Mc I said McDonald, Power, so quite a few people, brought in quite a few people as well and I was all in all happy with the business we did and uh, don't worry I will try and sign people you mentioned in the comments below because you can sign them anytime you want so any transfer like suggestions at all, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get around to it as best I can. But then on to player of the month, it went to Connor Chaplin for that game against Watford. Four goals on your debut against Watford. For a League One fucking player, that is fantastic and that is why he got it. Boateng was close but Chaplin won us that game and that is why he got it for. And then on to goal of the month and it had to go to Coglove for this goal against Watford. The only player other than Chaplin to score, but what a finish that was by Coglove. Good little play by Perkins beforehand as well. Little flick into Elder and a cracking finish by Coglove. But that's it for this massively long episode. Next one hopefully won't be as long as this one and all live commentary. But thanks for watching. Goodbye.